Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate you being here for this video. Now, by the thumbnail, you can see that I've made a table. It's got a brick pattern. It's made from, yep, walnut and maple. Here are some scraps. Now, if you wanna see how I did it, please stay tuned, but let me give you a quick backstory on why I'm making this thing. Okay guys, so the reason for this table is, well, it wasn't supposed to be a table in the first place at all. Okay, it was supposed to be a cutting board and I just didn't do it the right way. I didn't make it all in grain or all face grain for that matter. So the problem is, is in the glue up. There are a lot of strips of maple running by and the in grain happens to be glued to the face grain from the maple to the walnut. That's just kind of what happened. Not the strongest glue joint on the planet, but with as much face grain as that is in the maple in this piece, it should be fine. So I was like, well, I'm not gonna make it a cutting board. However, my kids, they need a new table. Reason being, I have to take the nicest table in the house, which is in a video made here. If you wanna check it out, I'll leave it in the description. Um, it's a live edge slab for them with hairpin legs and they've been using it forever. Now, I got two kids in there that eat at it. The third one, well, he's older and he can't sit at it anymore. Uh, however, it's tough because they're in two different rooms. They need another place to kind of hang and chill and put their snacks. So this is gonna be that. So here we go. Let's build this thing. Cool pattern. And you're gonna see how I got it done right now. So this brick pattern is pretty cool. And I'm gonna show you how to get it in just only two glue ups. It's pretty simple. Check this out. So you start out by cutting your maple at one quarters of an inch thick. And that is eight quarter stock. This is also some walnut as well that I'm cutting into one and a half inch thick pieces. And again, eight quarter stock, meaning that eight quarters of an inch, meaning it's two inches thick. Moving over to the cross cut sled, I've got a stop block in place at 11 inches and I'm going to cut all these pieces down to exactly 11 inches in length. Now I'm gonna bring each piece to its final thickness here at the drum sander. And I know drum sanders are not necessarily in everybody's shop, and this is definitely a luxury to have. In fact, I haven't made a cutting board on this channel or something like it because I really didn't have this tool. I'm just more comfortable using this, making cutting boards, so that's why you haven't seen them. Anyway, I've got that tool now to help me really with some efficiency. You can do this by hand sanding or planing. However, this really does help. So I'm gonna bring the walnut and maple together, every other piece you see here. This is what we're gonna start off with. After that, it's time for glue up. I've got a couple things set up here. I got some clamps set up. I got a couple of calls set up on the end of the clamps. And then I'm gonna use just regular PVA glue, wood glue here on all surfaces of one side. And then we start lining them up. Every other piece, walnut, maple, walnut, maple, and there you go. Really nice squeeze out on this one. I think this is gonna be pretty nice. So we're gonna let this dry for roughly three or four hours. You can even do it overnight, but I'm gonna tell you this, you do not want all that glue squeeze out clogging up your tools, either your sandpaper or your planter blades, whatever you're gonna use to flatten this out for its final thickness. You definitely wanna take a little bit of time and get this glue out of there because all that, you don't want that messing up your machines for sure. And before I put this back through the drum sander or planer, if that's what you have, that'll work just as well. I'm gonna sand it down as best I can with my random orbit sander and then run it through to its final thickness. At this point, it's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna take it over to the table saw next. And I'm just gonna start trimming off the edges just a little bit, barely, barely moving the fence on the table saw to get that thing nice and straight. And then we're gonna cut one inch strips until we can't cut anymore. You can see this pattern here. You can actually kind of tell if you, if you visualize, you can stagger that pattern over and over again. And that's what's going to give you that brick effect. And more on that later, but let's get these strips cut. And uh, yeah, look pretty good so far. All right, now I'm going to take the longer pieces of maple. We're going to sand these down on the drum sander, just like that, and then cut them off at the cross cut sled to length leaving these a bit oversized because you're going to trim this thing up later. There's a sneak peek of me just kind of playing around, trying to organize it. It's not glued up yet. And then time to take it apart, flood some glue on the surfaces. And I realized that, well, you can't really flood glue on undulating surfaces like that. So I go ahead and separate them out just like this. So I'm using standard wood glue here, PVA glue, but you can use a variety that has an extendable work time if you're not comfortable working this quick. 
Of course, you know, I'm not working this quick. This is sped up, but you get the gist. So you're gonna flood the surface with glue. And then again, you're gonna alternate every other one. However, I'm gonna make sure that every other line is lined up directly in the middle, making a brick pattern, really pretty simple stuff. I'm using a square to help me align it. Once I get it past where the square can reach, doing it by eye by getting down like that does pretty well. I'm gonna clamp it all home. And then I'm realizing I'm getting a little bit of, you know, push up from this. So I've got some calls here that have packing tape on one side so the glue doesn't stick. I'm gonna clamp these down on the surface as well. And then I'm gonna add a few more clamps. I mean, you know, you might as well just add as many as you got. And that's looking pretty good. So we're gonna let this dry overnight. And then it's time to unveil what we got. Same process as before, get rid of all that dried glue, sand it down a little bit with the random orbit sander, then I'm gonna run it through the drum sander and it would really be helpful to turn the dust collection on. You can see the difference, holy moly, I realize that I gotta go turn this stuff on and then when I do, it just goes away. <laughs> dust collector really does help. Mine's from Rockler, if you wanna check it out, it's in the link in the description below. I wanna thank them too for helping me along in these videos. And this thing is turning out beautiful. Whoa. All right, now to the cross cut sled. We're gonna cut off some of these pieces that really don't belong there. I don't cut quite far enough. I left too much maple exposed. That doesn't really give you the best effect. I'm gonna flip it over and do the same thing to the other side. And then later I'm coming back to cut off most of that maple, exposing most of the walnut on the sides, just like there is on the top and bottom. So just like working with walnut, every time it seems like there's some imperfections you gotta fill. And this stuff from Starbond, this medium black CA glue is great. You flood the surface, you throw some activator on it and you sand it down, and then it just fixes the problem. It's smooth to the touch and it's completely filled in. I got links down below if you want to get yourself some of that stuff as well. Man, that brick pattern is really looking great. Now it's time to finish sanding it. We're going to go from 180 to 240 using the random orbit sander. Take your time here and everything will go just great. This is really turning out to be a really beautiful piece. So time to clean up the edges a little bit with a quarter inch round over bit. You saw there, I went and did a little bit of a backwards cut or a climb cut with a router. Reason being, I don't want any blowout of an end grain. Sometimes when you take a router bit and you run it through the end of a piece, like right here, you might have some blowout. So I like to come back at it with a climb cut as they call it, really giving me no opportunity to have, or very little opportunity to have some type of blowout there. This is looking really nice. Now I'm gonna introduce you guys to a product that I didn't realize existed until this project. And after a little bit of 320 hand sanding, check this stuff out. So here it is. This stuff is called Wood Sealer. It's a varnish primer here from Total Boat. It basically fills the grain to seal and smooth the wood. It's UV stable and it's an also ideal foundation if you're gonna use a one part varnish like their Halcyon Clear, which I'm gonna be using on this as well. And of course, look how it brings out the color, the natural color of the wood. Some of that sapwood in the walnut right there and that maple looks fantastic. So here is the Halcyon Clear water-based marine varnish. It's a one part varnish. It goes on really nicely. And the beauty of it is, is that you can do three coats without sanding in between each coat, waiting one hour and it builds up a really nice durable finish. Now, for some reason, I didn't film me spraying it on the first couple times. So I've sanded this down to 320. There's already three coats on there and I'm putting a final coat on using an HVLP system. This is basically high volume, low pressure. It's a way to, you know, apply paints, stains, finishes. I like using a water-based finish because the cleanup is really easy. And this last coat is absolutely stunning. While that's drying, it's time to put some dark spray paint. I'm using a walnut color spray paint on these hairpin legs, and I'm coming back once it's dried a little bit with some clear lacquer, and my goodness, something just jumps right on my shoulder here. Not gonna lie, it freaked me out. Oh, this fell from a tree and hit me. I thought it was a bug. Yeah, if you've been a fan of the channel for a while, maybe you know I'm a little paranoid because I tend to put bugs in resin. 
Either way, we gotta attach these hairpin legs. And back in the shop, I've got some of these screws, and but they're a little bit too long. I need some shorter ones, but I've heard if you blend your yellow and blue screws together, that you get these, ah, yes, you get these shorter green screws that you're able to use, and that's what I'm gonna do here. Ooh, that is a load off my mind. I thought I was gonna have to make a trip to the hardware store, but thank goodness I don't have to do that now. Now, I'm gonna simply make a mark where these holes are, drill a quick little pilot hole, and then attach these screws as you see here. Pretty simple work. You do it to one, you do it to all four of these legs, and then it's time to flip it over and revel in the glory that is, well, what was gonna be a cutting board and now a table. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, and now, for a few shots outside and of course oh yeah it's beautiful not as beautiful as you of course my shadow had to follow me out here to do this photo shoot she is just so great to have around and the table turned out wonderful i want to thank total boat as well everything total boat is in the description if you want to check out their products definitely go check them out down there and i'm really pleased with how this turned out now here's some real life stuff right here are you putting the acorns in the jar Look at that. What's that? Good job. Where's the food go? On the table. And I really have no idea what she says here. But guys, thank you so much for joining me for this project. And this was a really good thing for me to do. I learned a lot in this process. Again, I'm working a little bit more with some hardwoods. Haven't forgotten my plywood roots though. I'm gonna tell you that right now, for sure. Now, if you look behind me, well, those are black table legs. And then if you can barely see this, shrouded in a painter's cloth are the five dining tables. And that video is being edited now. That was a big project, biggest commission I've ever done. And if you're watching this video and in the future from today, a couple weeks from now, I'm gonna post that video as well. That was a good one. And when it launches, I'll put it in the description of this one as well. So thanks for joining me for this. I really appreciate you guys being here for it. And again, like I always say, your viewership is enough for me, but I've got various links down below, merchandise, Patreon, other ways you can help support the channel. Check that out if you don't mind. Guys, thanks again. I really appreciate you being here and I'll see you guys on the next project. Till then, take care.